Roxby, uranium mine, is where nuclear weapons start. Okay, basically what we have here is we have the first stage milling. Uh, we have these, which are called autogenous mills. They basically lift the rock up and the rock falls down and smashes into other rocks, grinding it up into a small paste. But it doesn't finish there and then the reprocessing, you're left with a mountain of waste. What do you do with the waste? Well, we don't know yet because there's no safe method of disposing of it. We take this liquor and basically settle out any residual solids in it until you end up with a very pure liquid. Uh, the liquid is a kind of aqua green in colour, uh, which reflects both the greenish tinge which comes from the uh, uh, oh, sorry, the greenish tinge which comes from the uranium and bluish which comes from the copper sulphate. Um, the process generates a lot of dust and also sulphur dioxide, a number of six inches or 15 centimetres each time. Uh, basically that keeps going and that the walls are being continuously raised around the outside. What, what's their expenses in per per in perpetual? Radiation is one of the occupational hazards which are associated with our mining site. But because we handle uranium, uh, it's uh, very important that we do it. We have a whole host of international and national guidelines which we have to comply with. Uh, in particular, things like the International Atomic Energy Agency's International Basic Safety Standards for Radiation Protection. <coughs> Excuse me. At the level of exposure we get Olympic Dam, even if we had a coa size of you know, several hundred thousand, it's unlikely you can ever detect any kind of health impact. And that's from the studies we have done at higher level of exposure. But um, the data is gathered, it's just that there's no demand for an epidemiological study at this stage because the statistical power isn't there. Eating yellow cake with the But we can see the difference in the landscape since since the opening of the mines. We can see that there's less bush food around. People feel uncomfortable about eating kangaroo and emu because it's drinking water near the mines and eating grass and seeds that grow around the mines. We're, we all feel scared about that. So we've, we've now turned off. You can see over there the former central well field with a lot of the identified pipes sticking out and the tumbleweeds and other bushes growing back. So that's one that is almost mined out and we just got to decide whether it's worth coming back to get the last few bits out of it or not before it's assigned. So that, that leads to what's called the, the pregnant liquor pond. Uh, oh God. That's the name that they use. And the mining liquid, the mining fluid from the well fields comes and goes into that pond first and then it's pumped from that pond straight into the, the plant. And that's got a floating cover on it because the algae so much of it's uh, clogging up the filters. Mm. Yeah, could you tell us what rehabilitation you did with the spills that you had? Did you have your I'll, I'll you do that one at the talk yeah, because okay. I'll, I'll have uh, a bit of presentation to it, but you're welcome to ask me again um, after. We know what our old people told us about the poisons in, in Vipagania and in Varadlana, that that's hot springs, because it was steaming up which it still is, it's steam, it's steaming up and they told us then, like I said before, you can touch the water but don't drink it. Only Javassini Aoi, that is poison water. A little bit more about native title. So just as the environmental approvals were revisited, the Aboriginal native title agreements were revisited recently and the, there was one for Beverly, 
uh, renegotiated in time and date. Four Mile last year and Beverly North, which is a project immediately north of here, um, was only signed in the last month or so. Our people were, weren't really forced into signing, but I somehow think, think that somehow they were forced into signing because you get we get royalties from the Beverly mine and uh, the mining company will come and say to the people, meet with the community and say to them, look, if we don't sign off on this next agreement, your royalties will be stopped. Heritage clearance is a requirement of all modern mining and that's a picture of one of the clearance groups going out to check some areas for cultural heritage issues and uh, the guys in the orange shirts work for us and that includes some Aboriginal people as well. When our old people pass on they leave us in charge of the land to look after the land. Now they would say, which meant don't uncover too many things, but look after the land. They were very strong about saying, about telling us about looking after the land. Gonna be a blockbuster.